just outside Nairobi, Anita Soyina is talking to students at the Dawamo School about the climate crisis. As you've heard, my name is Anita Soyina. If you look at my t-shirt, it's written the green war. So it has something to do with green, environment, nature. I'm an environmentalist. A passionate environmentalist, Anita started a movement called the Spice Warriors, which aims to educate children about the climate crisis. Have you planted trees before? How many? Through their Greening Schools initiative, which involves students and teachers planting and caring for trees, she hopes people will understand how they can be part of the solution to climate change. I can say these trees were pangwad. Today, she has around 25 indigenous tree seedlings that are ready for planting. Her and a team of volunteers will show the students how to plant, water, and nurture the trees. Climate education is one of the, uh, the pillars uh, of what we do. We have our climate education, we educate people on, in, on the importance of the environment and try to make them see that whatever is happening is directly linked to climate change. And we started by doing it in schools. Uh, so we had a program with schools where children will adopt a tree. We go to schools, plant fruit trees and indigenous trees and let the children adopt them and take care of them. Most of the time when we go to pupils and students in school, we share about what our personal life journeys as a team. And they really, they really feel like, so being an environmentalist is not just a dirty job. You know, so we have this mentality that it's a dirty job of picking up trash and just getting to the mud and planting trees. So we really try to show it's something very decent. And one thing that I also like to tell every other time is that I remind them that the qualification that they need for them to be in this space is just the fact that we live in this planet. That alone is enough. Tree planting initiatives have sprouted up all over Kenya as a way to reverse decades of deforestation and environmental degradation. It was championed by the late Kenyan Nobel Peace Prize winner, sure. Professor Wangari Matai. Her Green Belt movement has planted over 50 million trees to date. And now activists like Anita are carrying the torch. We put some water to make it more soft. And for us, we love to show love to trees as well. <laughs> so we, you massage the walls of the trees to also keep the soil intact. While these seedlings offer a glimmer of hope in the battle against climate change, the long spells of dry weather are making it harder to keep them alive. It's an issue Anita and her team of volunteers face every time they go out to plant trees. Climate change has brought about drought, and over time it has become severe and worsened the situation of access to water. So it's really hindering the survival and the growth of trees. So it's actually also leading to wastage of tree seedlings where we go out, plant the trees, plant the trees, wait for the rains, no rains. We need people to water, but they, maybe the water catchments are not even nearby, some are drying up. So it's really affecting climate change, causing droughts, and now the droughts making it difficult for us to reverse our actions. The drought and dry weather have become so serious that many Kenyan families and children are feeling its effects. Without water, trees, plants and crops cannot grow, making it harder for families to eat. We realize that so many school-going children have other challenges because you could be going to a school to plant trees with a child who has not had food for the longest time. Anita has seen firsthand how the climate crisis is changing day-to-day -day life for Kenyans. She is from the indigenous Maasai community, pastoralists that rely on traditional nomadic farming for food and water. It is their plight that inspires Anita to fight for a healthier planet. I come from the Maasai community. After I've grown up, I really focused on how can I go back to understand my community better and give back. And that is when I came to learn that um, the fact that we have been moving around as much as it's part of culture that uh, we are pastoralists, it's also because climate change has really uh, caused droughts, worse droughts. And with these droughts, people are not able to provide food for themselves, food for livestock. And just seeing that it's really a problem that's already with us and needs uh, more voices on board. So that is one thing that really made me to be there, to be in the space. 
that this is a problem that already exists and I can do something about it, however little it is. When Anita attended COP26, it became clear to her that any change in climate change policy was in the hands of leaders, not activists. It was just so difficult for me to understand. Then most of the things that uh, they were saying and addressing, they were addressing their challenges to leaders. All placards were just dear leaders, dear world leaders. The problem is the lack of political goodwill. So what do we do about this? Like I started, whenever I find a problem, I try to understand how can I be part of the solution. Back in Kenya, she decided that being part of the solution meant having a voice where it counts in government. And so, at 22 years old, she ran for a seat in Parliament as part of the Green Party. She was the youngest MP candidate in 2022. I can say I didn't prepare myself financially, even mentally, and so many ways that you need to be prepared for politics, especially for the culture of politics in Africa. But I had to do it. Young people have really been sidelined and silenced, and their voices have not been listened to. And in a culture such as ours, they've almost had to fight and earn the right to speak up and the right to be heard and to be listened to. And so while political leadership and, um, and decision makers have not been very welcoming and receptive and inviting of them, I think they've reached a place where they actually have paused and said, we have to listen to these young people. They're asking important questions. They're pointing us to the places where we have real threats and they actually have very good ideas on how it is that we can solve some of the problems. Although Anita lost her battle for a spot in the government, she is still fighting what she calls the Green War. Just do the little that you can where you can, where you are, not only on environmental issues, but even out there, even in class when you're trying to help uh, that uh, fellow student, just try and do the little that you can. We don't want you as an individual to do a million things. We want millions and millions of people to do the little that they can. My dream is to see results, not only from my work, but the work of so many other people out there trying to fight for the same thing.